Hello, and welcome to Stone Red Sun Play Minecraft. I'm um, just going to do a short video today about how to create a perfectly stable nuclear reactor in Techit slash Technic Pack, of course. Right, so let's get started. I'll just wipe my inventory. What you want is to start yourself off. Reactor chamber. Nuclear reactor, you'll actually want four reactor chambers. No, you'll actually want five reactor chambers. You'll actually want six. Forgive me. Uh, I'm going to do this in creative mode because uh, I can't be bothered with all the gubbins of survival at the moment. So, get a block like that. You want to drop your reactor on top. Okay? And now, break the block underneath. And then all around it, you want to add your reactor chambers. Now, to do this, you have to hold shift when you place them, otherwise you just open the interface and it will be quite annoying. So there's your six reactor chambers. Okay, next up, you want to get yourselves um, some redstone and a repeater. And the repeater goes under the front with redstone trailing down the side. Doesn't matter what that's set to, um, that's easiest obviously for well, when you'll see later. Uh, next you want a lever. Now this is very important, this is your emergency shut off. If you feel nervous or if you think it's not working or if you think it's not set up right, you know there's flames spouting out the top or whatever, flip the lever, the reactor ain't doing anything. It shuts it off completely so you're totally safe. Uh, next up you'll want a thermal monitor, it's a very interesting piece of kit, hold shift to put it on. You can set it to mm, you know, roughly anything within reason, if you've done any work with reactors you know the limits they can go to, but for this to be perfectly safe, 500 is probably the best, so just make sure you're on 500. Next up, this is what keeps it cool. You want, that's not it, because that's spelled wrong, you want some pneumatic tubes. You want a condenser. You want some collectors. I'll use Mark ones. You want two collectors. You'll want some glowstone. You'll want a timer and some ice. So, pneumatic tubing into the base or the side of the reactor. Anyway, it doesn't really matter, just just as long as it works. You can do what you like, really. Uh, and what you want to do is... Oh, I forgot the most important bit. You want to get a filter. Okay, get a filter. I'm going to put it on the end. You make sure the small end is going out of the tube. If not, you can use a screwdriver to turn it around. I'm going to put your collector on the end. <coughs> Uh, condense on the end, sorry, two collectors either side. Um, anything, uh, Mark 1 collectors, if you're using Mark 1s, um, obviously put glowstone on top of them, and you have to use at least two. Mark 2s and Mark 3s, you possibly will get away with one, but I would always use two no matter what. Uh, but two Mark 1s at least. So, uh, stick some ice in there. Building it quite fast, not a problem. Now, you want to... Uh, put a timer on there, set it to about 7 seconds. So that'll start pumping ice into your reactor. Start filling it up nice. And that is basically the very basic setup. Now if you've done it right, if you've done it like this, if you made sure the timer is set to 500, linked to it, so if it gets too hot, the thermal monitor will detect it, output a redstone pulse, which will pause it just long enough for it to get below 500. It will release the redstone pulse, it will begin generating power again. Once it hits 500, it will stop. Emergency safety, just in case. And to keep it going that little bit longer so it's not sputtering and jumping, because if you set it up without this ice thing, it will just buzz on and off and on and off and on and off, and you won't get a consistent amount of power. So, very simple. If you've been playing it long enough, this setup is not hard to make. You mostly have the resources. Um, some people get confused about how to get ice, but basically just get a compressor, put some snow in it, and you'll get ice, so um, you probably know that anyway, I don't want to insult you. So let's clear that, and let's get somewhere to store it. 
We want some, one piece of 4 times high voltage cable and a high voltage transformer. Some glass fibre cable. And an MFSU. So, uh, high voltage cable out. High voltage transformer. And then we can start using glass fibre to our MFSU. Now, I like to uh, use multiple MFSUs because then it means that your power isn't completely wasted once one of them fills, I mean that's 40 million uh, EU, so you've not got you, you, you're you going to be using it for then. Right, so let's, let's get on with it. I'll clear my inventory I'll turn to creative so I can fill up Ooh, try and spell get rid of that cake and let's get some uranium in there Let's fill up my inventory with uranium. Let's leave the safety on. And you want to have about one row of ice. One row that's completely full of ice. Okay. So I need a bit more than that. I'm going to do this, look. You want to fill a row with ice. That'll make sure you're perfectly safe. There obviously are corners you can cut, you can put a bit more uranium to squeeze them a few bits out, a few more ticks, you can turn that up of course, but everything you do will will decrease the safety of this reactor, so just just keep that in mind. But let's um let's see how this goes. Hopefully this won't blow up. There we go. Now we're getting steady pulses as you can see look. Steady pulses of energy. Looks like it's heating up, and it is, of course, but not past 500, so you're in no danger. Uranium's ticking away there. That one isn't, for some reason. It should be, but it isn't. Oh well. The ice is being replenished a lot faster than it's being used, so we're perfectly safe. And we've already got a quarter of a million of EU, which has been filtered down. Obviously, not into that one, or that one, but it is into that one. So then we can start running whatever we need after that. Um, one of the things I would suggest doing is um, getting mass fabricators because you're using a lot of EU and it can feel like you're wasting it at times, but these generate UU matter which can be used to make um, iridium ore which can be used to make iridium plates for the quantum suit armour, so it is an investment in the end. So. Possibly a couple of those, not even there, because that's not even where they go. I want that, I don't want that. I want the glass fibre cable again. And I can't spell. So glass fibre. Probably want to just use a couple of these. They make a quite a cool noise, which uh, you can't hear, because it doesn't record sound, does it? No. But they make a cool noise, you'll find out. So, uh, yes, and these will start making matter. And then you can use that in your crafting of armour, that is quite cool. So, yes, you'll be getting a severely high amount of energy here, which is very nice. So there you go, and that is perfectly safe. Of course, you can take the precautions, you can put three layers of reinforced glass around it, so it will protect you, you can sink it to the bottom onto bedrock level so if it does go off you're not going to lose your entire laboratory but that's pretty much guaranteed safe ain't much going to happen that's going to set that off but <coughs> you know any any precautions will be fine just don't flood the thing with water on top because all the wiring will go and it'll just explode and then you'll be quite sad so you're probably alright with that just uh, don't be stupid don't do daft things, and you're probably all right. You know, don't don't tempt fate, because you know bad stuff always happens. Don't play around with uh, play around with nature, because you know stuff never does end well. So uh, just make sure you you do things right. Just make sure uh, everything you you try works out right, and. Sure.